via transformations that cosine of pi halves minus x is equal to sine of x, right? That's how I taught it. And so when I told you guys how to memorize those co-function identities, I said, guys, if you're going to transform the cosine graph, the only graph it can look like is the sine graph. Agreed? But then it kind of confused me because I gave you guys the quiz and I gave you the co-function identity of secant. And you guys did not write cosecant. So obviously, it didn't sink into everybody. But again, like these are just transformations of a graph. So of course, cosine transformed is only going to look like sine. But now that we know the sum and difference formulas, we could also verify it that way. right? Because again, verifying is make the left side look like the right side. We're not going to distribute. Agreed? Don't distribute. We haven't done that yet. Agreed? And I already warned you against not doing it. Um, so if you see the addition or subtraction of angles, right? And obviously, you could just use the co-function identity. But we're going to use these. Um, we're going to use this sum of the difference formula to show that the left side is equal to the right side. So by using that formula, I'll have cosine pi halves um, times the cosine of x. Notice it's not negative x, right? Remember I talked to you guys about u minus v. You're plugging in u and v, not negative v. Agreed? So don't make that mistake. A lot of people forget about that. Plus sine of pi halves times sine of x. All right. Well. Cosine of pi halves is pi halves 0. Good. Times cosine of x plus sine of pi halves is 1. Well, 0 times cosine is 0. 1 times sine is sine of x. There you go. So yeah, those formulas do work. right? And that cofunction identity is true. Cosine is sine. Cosine of that cofunction identity does give you sine. Okay. I do not prefer to memorize it that way. I prefer to look at the transformations in the graph. But that is something that I do want you guys to be aware of.